Hey guys, Gamer Zach here, and welcome to another one of my Civilization VI videos. Now, religion in Civilization VI has been something I've been looking forward to ever since we've heard about the bits and pieces, such as religious warfare and combat being a thing. Well, after officially revealing a number of civilizations that lean towards a religious game, such as Spain and India, Firaxis finally had a live stream focusing on the mechanics of religion, linked in the description of course, I went ahead and condensed everything I thought was important and interesting into 10 points for this video, so let's get started. First, we gotta talk about faith. Faith points are the fundamental building blocks of anything to do with religion in Civilization VI. You gain faith by building holy sites, temples, or other religious buildings or tile improvements like Spain's mission. Relics and natural wonders can also give you faith per turn, and some great people can give faith bonuses too. Spending faith is where it really counts though, and you can use faith to buy religious units, rush any great person, and in some cases even purchase districts. Next are Pantheon Beliefs. Pantheons are different from religions and sort of act like proto-religions. You basically get to choose from a list of bonuses for your civilization. Nothing too strange here compared to Civ V, but this time you keep your pantheons throughout the game even if your cities are converted to another religion later on. They remain ingrained in your cities as an integral part of their culture. The next step up from pantheons are actual religions. There's only one way to found a religion in Civilization VI, and that's to get a great prophet, which founds a religion and makes a city a holy city for that religion. Great prophets are limited in each game, and once you get one, you can't get another. As for your religion itself, you can still customize the name and icon of your religion, but for mechanics, you choose beliefs, which are more bonuses of some kind, and building type, a church, mosque, synagogue, meeting house, and so on. And depending on your choice of building, it will give different bonuses. Religions start with two beliefs, but can be upgraded to four using an apostle, which is a new unit to Civilization VI. So basically we have four different kinds of bonuses when it comes to religion in Civ VI. First we've got Pantheon bonuses, which are early religious bonuses that you can get before founding a religion, and as mentioned earlier, last throughout the game in your cities, even if the majority religion changes. Then we have the Founder beliefs, which are bonuses that you get if you found your own religion. There's Follower beliefs, which are bonuses anyone following the religion will get. And then there's Worship beliefs, which are the bonuses you get from the holy building that's associated with your religion. Then, on the visual side, we have the religious lens. In Civ 6, there are a number of lenses that you can activate that act as information overlays to your map. The religion lens shows relevant religious data and automatically activates when you select a religious unit, or you can manually select it using the lens button over the minimap. This lens shows the different religions using colors, and then a few things over cities such as a pressure radar pulse, showing how much pressure that city is emanating for that religion, and a number and a radial bar showing the ratio of how much of the population is following which religion. The religion lens tells us what's important when you're playing a religion game, and increasing pressure and converting population seems to be the objective. Next up is the spread of religion. It works similar to Civ V. Cities within 10 tiles are pressured by other cities to accept their religion, and holy cities exert additional pressure. That's for passive spread. As for actively spreading religion, missionaries are best suited for just spreading religion, but apostles, the new unit, can do it too, though at a higher cost. Both those units are bought using faith, by the way. It's also been reported that you can capture cities using religious fervor alone, but we haven't actually seen this in action, but if it's true, religious conquest could be a thing. Now, to be clear on religious units in Civilization VI, technically there are four of them. First we've got missionaries, who spread religion, can't attack, but can defend against other religious units, and has two spread charges. Then we have Apostles. They spread religion, can add new beliefs to your religion, start an inquisition, and engage in theological combat with other religious units. They also have two uses, but you can spend a whole unit to add beliefs or to start an inquisition. Apostles are much more expensive compared to missionaries, but they get a special promotion power, which we'll talk about in a bit. Then there are Inquisitors. Use them to stamp out competing religions, but you must use an Apostle to launch an Inquisition first before being able to build Inquisitors at all. They are stronger in theological combat compared to Apostles, and if you're going for a religious game, these are going to be what puts you in the lead. And finally we have the Great Prophets. Great Prophets are used to found religions and make the city it's in a holy city. 
You can only recruit one because that's all they do and you can't found two religions. We can see in the dev stream that it actually says cannot recruit since they had already founded a religion on the great person's screen. As a side note, there's also units that work well with the religious playstyle, such as Spain's conquistadors, that convert a captured city to Spain's majority religion if it's in an adjacent tile when you capture it, but we won't get into that too much. Now, about those Apostle Special Promotion POWs I mentioned, they're actually really important. When you build an Apostle unit, you get a limited choice of certain promotion bonuses. Some examples that were mentioned in the dev livestream were Proselytizer, where religious spread eliminates other religions in the target city, Orator, which means that Apostle can spread religion two extra times, and Heathen Conversion, which allows the Apostle to convert all adjacent barbarians to become your own military units. These promotion powers could really turn the tide of things if you use them properly and add a lot of power to religious units. It has to be repeated though that apostles will cost a lot more than missionaries and if you're just looking to spread religion, you should stick to missionaries. Then the thing I've been looking forward to and that sounds terrible out of context, religious warfare. Theological combat between religious units is now a thing where apostles and inquisitors can attack other religious units. Missionaries can only defend. The interesting thing here is that the results of these fights have an effect on the surrounding cities. The unit defeated, well that unit's religion is reduced in all cities within 10 tiles, while the victor's unit's religion is increased in surrounding cities. Winning theological combat could help quickly convert entire regions of the map to your religion. Also, as a side note on declaring war, there are now justified reasons that you can go to war so you don't get a lot of hate from other civilizations. This is the new Casus Belli system, which is a video by itself, but there's now Holy Wars, which means if you declare war after another Civ has religiously converted one of your cities using religion, you can go to war with them and only get half the warmonger penalty so you don't ruin your reputation with other civilizations as much. Finally, we have a new victory type in Civilization VI, which is the Religious Victory. So what it says is, to achieve a religious victory, your religion must become the predominant religion for every civilization in the game, both for major and minor civilizations. And what it means by predominant is that it needs to be followed by more than 50% of the cities in a civilization. Whatever the conditions though, having actual victory conditions through religion means that playing a religious game in Civ 6 is something that you can commit to and really focus on, and that Firaxis are taking the religion side of the mechanics seriously. It's not going to be tacked on or an afterthought. Alright, and that's it for Religion in Civilization 6. What do you think? Like the changes or hate them? And will you be going for a religious victory in Civ 6? Also, if you're looking for more Civ 6 videos, you could continue to check out new gameplay complexities in my last video, or if you're still not sure if you should buy Civ 6, you can have a look at my 5 things that you need to know before buying. I also release a new Civilization 6 video every Friday, so subscribe to see the next one as soon as it's out. And that's it from me, my name's Ben Gamer Zach, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.